Story 1. I completely forgot about this until I heard a similar story. This happened many years ago, but I remember most of it because it was just so ridiculous and I briefly wrote about it in my journal. I'm female and at the time was in my late 30s, as were the rest of the group. I used to have a friend she moved, so we lost touch who had an extremely unpleasant younger sister, along with her troublesome eight-year-old female child. I mean, this child was such a nuisance, and her mom enabled and indulged her. This child would always take other people's belongings and either mess with them, break or eat them, or steal them, and would throw a fit if you stopped her, causing her mom to confront you. Of course, her mother never offered to replace anything. One night, a group of us all women, this night went to my friend's house for a horror movie marathon night. We did movie night two to three times a month, always with a different theme, and friends and spouses were welcome. Each of us was expected to bring a snack, drinks alcohol was optional, and one or more movies. We'd then pick, via mutual agreement, the three or four we liked best to watch. Suffice it to say, young children weren't allowed. We were well into our first movie and two bottles of wine when my friend's front door opened and her sister walked in unannounced, saying she was going clubbing and trying to leave the child with us because we were staying home anyway, so it shouldn't be a big deal. My friend was angry and refused to watch the child because she later told us that 1. She's a spoiled, destructive child. 2. Her sister didn't call or ask, despite multiple warnings. 3. This was her time to unwind with friends, not babysit her sister's misbehaving offspring. 4. None of the movies were remotely child-friendly, and she wasn't going to alter her plans just because her sister wanted to go clubbing. 5. Did I mention the child was a spoiled, destructive nuisance? She didn't say any of this, just gave a flat no, to which both her sister and the child threw a tantrum it turned out she told her daughter she would be having a fun movie night with Auntie. As they argued, the child took the opportunity to grab the remote and started playing the DVD we'd paused when they let themselves in it was the 1988 remake of The Blob and Was Mine and started watching. None of us stopped her because, honestly, we were too busy watching the sisters fight to notice. Ironically, we had paused it just before a particularly scary, gross scene where a little boy gets grabbed, pulled under the water, then comes up half-melted and screaming before being dragged back under and devoured. Naturally, the child freaks out and starts crying, which alerts her mother, who starts yelling at us for letting her child watch, I'm paraphrasing here because this was a while ago, and I didn't write her words, our disgusting movies pretty sure she also used some strong language too. Then she demanded to know who it belonged to. Since I strongly disliked this woman, I got up off the couch, but surprisingly, so did another friend who was a very buff, sporty girl whom the mother hated and actively feared because they'd gotten into a physical altercation the year prior. This happened when the unpleasant woman flirted with my friend's fiancé at a party, and no, she wasn't intoxicated, then slapped my friend, who promptly fought back against the unpleasant woman in front of everyone. My friend glared at her, then said, It doesn't matter whose movie it is. What matters is you coming in here uninvited, giving your sister nonsense, not watching your child then getting upset when your child again touches stuff that isn't hers and ends up scaring herself. Now I suggest you get your child, turn around and go home. A smart person would have done what my friend said. But the unpleasant woman was never particularly smart. Instead of leaving, she turns to me and starts getting in my face, probably figuring I wasn't going to retaliate because she was smaller than me, she's my height, but much slimmer. She was right, but also wrong. I have a temper, always have, but my temper will first manifest as sarcasm right up until I either reach my saturation point or the person picking the fight touches me, then it's game on. And by that point, I don't give a darn if you're smaller or bigger. So she got in my face, yelling a mishmash of nonsense I didn't really listen to, nor care about, except a sentence or two, like, we needed to care for her child. When she stopped to take a breath, I said, why is it our job to watch your child? It's not like any of us pushed her out of our womb. The unpleasant woman actually gasped like someone in a graphic novel and yelled in my face, you have a son. Yes, I do, I replied, starting to get really mad. But do you see him here? No, that's because I'm not a self-centered jerk who'd bring him to an adult's only gathering or leave him with others without asking. 
This really set her off. And like any entitled person who can't fight, she tried to slap me. Luckily, she fights poorly. Too bad for her. I don't. When she pulled her arm back, people, never telegraph your blows. I moved slightly to the side, grabbed her arm, rotated it behind her back, grabbed her hair, then planted her face hard in the nearest wall, pinning her arm behind her back. It felt satisfying. She struggled and cursed, but I wasn't letting go. I told her she had three choices. She could take her child and leave, quietly. I could fight her in front of her child, I'd never do that. But she didn't know that, and by this point, one of the others had taken the child into the kitchen, but I was too busy to notice, or I could call the police, have her arrested for assault. Then call her ex who disliked her because she cheated to come pick the child up. She agreed to option one, but then tried to get her sister to side with her once I released her because… Family. Friend responded by taking her keys, removing her house key, and telling her that neither she nor her child were welcome in her house and to please get out. The look on the entitled mother's face was one of utter shock. She then looked at all of us for support Why she looked at me for help. I just don't get it, but we just glared at her. Realizing nobody would side with her, she grabbed her child, called us all a rude name especially me, and left, slamming the door. Friend apologized to us no need, we all knew her sister was difficult. Then immediately called her parents, giving them the low down and warning them that unless they wanted to end up watching the troublesome child all weekend, they'd better get in their car and go anywhere else. Her sister had done this before, many times, and to warn the other relatives as well. The entitled mother didn't get to go clubbing and soon after lost custody of her child to her ex. Story 2 my mom owns a farm and every year she has a community day where various people volunteer to entertain the local children. I have a face paint stall where, for three hours, I paint faces for free with my own materials. An hour into it, the entitled mother enters the scene and asks me whether I've seen her daughter's phone. I say I saw a pinkish phone on the table, but that was a while ago and I don't know where it is now. Turns out that was her daughter's phone. So naturally, she then accuses me of stealing it. I told her she can check my bag, as I haven't left this seat for ages. She searches my phoneless bag and then accuses a volunteer face painter of being in cahoots with me to steal the phone. It goes back and forth like this for a while. Me denying, her accusing. She ends up being so belligerent that I tell her to leave the property. She yells at me telling me that a 22-year-old cannot evict her. She says she wants to see the owner of the property. We find the owner and she freaks out when I say, Hi, Mom. Can you ask this woman to leave? She left in haste, cursing me. Story 3 My family and I moved back to my home country, New Zealand, a few years ago and brought over all our animals. One of our cats became an outdoor cat and wandered to all of our neighbor's gardens, but she would always come back home at night. One night we noticed that she didn't come back, but we thought it was a fluke. One night became one week and by then, we had already called around our close neighbors and had printed out posters. One day walking home from school, my sister saw her in a neighbor's window and called our parents. My mother and I went to their home and confronted them about it. Our neighbors consisted of one mother, one father and a little girl about seven years old. Apparently what had happened was she wandered into their garden. The neighbor's daughter managed to catch her and wanted to keep her despite the obvious caller. The parents allowed her to keep our cat and replaced her collar. When my mother demanded that they give her back, our neighbor obviously refused and tried to twist the story and make it our fault because we didn't offer to sell our cat when we moved in. I don't even know how a person can be that delusional. The mother claimed that it was unfair to her precious baby that we didn't offer to give them our cat because her daughter was younger than my sister and I. She said that our cat and her child had formed a bond. I had had enough and called our cat and the second she appeared, I grabbed her and ran away. The mother and child started to scream loudly so my mother followed after me. When the neighbor called the police and demanded that we give her back, they forgot the fact that microchips exist and that was all the proof the police needed to see that she was ours. We did tell our neighbors who have cats to make sure to watch out for them. Story 4 I'm posting this for a friend of mine. My buddy is a very good surgeon and has dedicated his life to medicine. 
he frequently goes to hotspots around the world to offer his services. He spent time in Syria, in Iraq during the war, in Africa, after the September 11th attacks and the Boston bombing. He got in his car and offered his help at hospitals there. He is unmarried, and the only thing he does for himself is he takes three or four weeks off twice a year. Once in July and once in December, he told me he does this so he doesn't lose his mind. On those times he really lets loose, he'll go on vacation somewhere, maybe take up a hobby, go skydiving, scuba diving, meet women, eat wild food, and at Christmas he spends time with his brother's family and apparently gives some pretty nice gifts. He's as good of a person as you could ever hope to meet, and an excellent surgeon. Without giving too much away, before COVID, at his hospital they had a pretty busy day, which at a hospital is never a good thing. He was doing one emergency surgery after another. Everyone was slammed and more people were waiting for emergency care. One person had already died because of the backlog, and a few more on the operating table. No matter how good the surgeon is, sometimes you simply can't save people. In the midst of all this chaos, the entitled mother walks into the emergency room and begins demanding that someone see her misbehaving child who had a bruise on his face because another kid punched him at school probably for being difficult. The secretary managed to get her to wait in the waiting room, with all the people waiting to see if their loved ones were okay. Her child went and apparently decided that he was the only one allowed to play with the hospital waiting room toys and would scream at any other kids who tried to approach. Our hero doctor, meanwhile, is fighting for the life of a 16-year-old who was in a car accident, no idea if it was his fault or not, it didn't matter, and sadly the kid didn't make it. I always feel this is the worst thing for a surgeon, they try their best, but sometimes it's not good enough. He has to get his own emotions in check before going to face the parents. They have a special room for this in the hospital, it has comfortable furniture and a table that is nailed down. He is in the middle of breaking this awful news to parents who are feeling a pain that words are too cheap to describe. When in bursts the entitled mother, apparently she followed the parents as they were escorted to the room. She looked around and said, When you are done taking a break, my son needs. Doctor shoves her out and calls security. He finishes talking to the parents then goes to the waiting room. Secretary filled him in. He asks the mother who had been berating the secretary ever since being so rudely treated by the doctor which child was hers. He went over to the child and in the waiting room to give the child a quick look over. Declares he doesn't have a concussion and tells the mother to get out of my hospital before I call the police. Entitled mother, I demand you. Hero doctor, no, I have patients that need me much more than you. Your child is fine, you just need to raise him better. Get out. He had security escort her and her child all the way to her car to ensure that she left. This is a guy who I have never seen get angry. He got robbed in Ibiza losing his wallet. All his credit cards, IDs, and his passport and shrugged it off saying he already cancelled the card. Put an alert for the IDs and the most the robber got was about Euro 50 and a nice wallet. But when he told me this story he was shaking with rage. 